Yaho, 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 yaho. Welcome everybody to the Rock Bottom Podcast. I am Super Genki and we're just going to get into it today while I am drawing some Shenron on Twitch. Um, I've realized recently that a lot of people, they try to fool themselves into thinking that their personas are their real person. Now, I'll give an example for me. For a long time, I have tried to associate myself with this image of Super Genki. Now, I like Super Genki. I like it a lot. And I think I like, I want to be it more than anything. But associating myself with this image of Super Genki has really led me to forget who I really am, which is the person behind the image. And I think that because a lot of us, we don't understand that people are people when they're like famous and stuff, we tend to give them the criticism that we would never say it for anyone because we think that they can take it. But a lot of human emotions are pushed down inside of our being just because we think that people can take them. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've been reading some articles recently. I did a video on this, um, that actually it really, it really got me up. It really touched me and I, and I hit an emotional chord with me. Not touched me. That sounds weird. But he had an emotional chord with me recently where I was, there's like a fly in my face, where I was, um, I was reading about Terrace House. And I don't even watch Terrace House. I just know Terrace House because legitly speaking, I met one of the cast members. I didn't meet him, but I saw him in concert in, in, in Madrid. Buddy, if you don't get away from me, if you don't get away from me, I'm going to have to get you out of here. I met him in Madrid and he was a really good singer. And then I saw this when I was on JapanToday.com and this, this girl committed suicide because like she got a lot of hate mail for the way she acted in one of the episodes of the TV show. It's like a reality TV show. And I mean, this isn't atypical with people that go on reality TV shows. They get into dark places. But I do feel that we're all wearing this mask for society and then because you're somehow famous, you're somehow not human anymore. And I, I don't, I'm not famous. I'm not famous. I mean, people know me a little bit. Like my people that I've met know me a little bit. I'm not famous by any degree. But I feel like I've given into this mentality of thinking of myself, thinking of myself as this impenetrable fortress in terms of my person and in terms of like who I want to be and what I'm trying to do with my life. And because I've done that, I've just come up to a bunch of problems in my, in my being. I've come up with a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of stuff that has really been around. Has, hasn't been around for too long. Well, it's been around for a long time. But it's really been boiling up right now in quarantine. And the reason being is because something that always made me forget, made me forget the hardship of being human was my interaction with people. You know, as long as I could talk to people, I was always okay. You know, because I'm a, I'm, a I'm a people talker. I talk to people all the time. But when quarantine took that away from me, I tried to maintain my, my, my aura, my machismo, my charisma without the thing that actually, that I, what I was working for, without people. And I think without people, I really started becoming a different person because I forgot, largely speaking, what I was even working for in the first place. And I think that's one of the things that um, really led me to hitting rock bottom because this is the Rock Bottom Podcast. I'm going to talk to you about this experience of hitting rock bottom because this is literally where I'm at right now. I'm literally stuck here in the rock bottom trying to figure out my life. And I'm in a foreign country. Go figure. I feel like an immigrant trying to get back to America right now. I don't understand it completely, but I kind of understand it a little bit. The uh, desire to really want to be in America right now. To be... And for me, it just comes in the sense of I want to be in America because I want to be closer to my family. But I'm, I'm over here and messed up thing is I'm choosing to be over here in Spain right now because I'm like, if I go back to America, okay, and this is another problem with my character is that if I go back to America right now, nothing is going to change. I'm still going to be the same person. I'm not going to learn anything. Maybe I'll be able to like, maybe I'll be around people for a little bit, but it's not going to correct the problems that I'm facing right now. It's just going to shy them away for a little bit. You know what I mean? And I think that's one of the, the scariest things for me right now is that I'm like, you know, I have this big problem that I've never confronted before because I've never been away from people for so long. But if I go back to America, I put myself around people, all right? Yeah, I'm back with my family. I'm back with some of my old friends. 
and then I continue living again. But is it really going to change who I am? Is it really going to help me not have to fall back into this rock bottom? I'm sure that I'll fall back into other rock bottoms. I'm sure I'll fall back into other rock bottoms while I'm while I'm still living and trying to change stuff. I don't want to say the world anymore because I've tried to change the world for a long time. I think the world needs to... The world's kind of taking a backseater with me right now. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to give the world too much power over my being right now because a lot of that stuff is outside of my control. Especially with the whole situation that we're seeing right now. I made a couple of videos about it today. I was pissed off, man. And you know what it is? Whenever I'm pissed off, I never feel the need to talk about being pissed off because I'm like, oh, it's not the kind of content that, you know, I want to produce. So, like, what's the point? What's the point of, like, uh, producing this kind of content, man? It's not the message I'm trying to say to people. But I got to be honest about this stuff. I got to be, I got to be serious with myself, with who I'm trying to be. So I'm going to start trying to be living a little more authentically um, in the future. Like, and by authentic, what do I mean by authentic? What I mean by authentic is that I don't want to deny myself the human emotions that I have anymore because that's that's probably the biggest thing that led to me falling into this big downward spiral, like this huge ultimate downward spiral that killed all my motivation to do anything. And that's what it is. When we talk about when we talk about falling into into rock bottom stuff. I think we feel bad, but I've never felt this bad. I've never felt so bad that I don't want to do anything anymore. You know, and I feel like that is literally what I've fallen into now. I've really fallen into this rock bottom where I've lost all motivation to even get up out of bed in the morning. And that's rough. That's a, that's a rough kind of feeling to get into. I gotta get this whisker game strong for Shenron right here. You gotta get these whiskers, these whisker games strong for Shenron right here. And I, and uh, oh dude, this is rough. Cause I, I wanna make sure that it's not like too overlappy with, uh, with the dragon. But yeah, man, just thinking about becoming more authentic in my person and um, trying to make sure that this, this, this specific rock bottom doesn't happen again because I, it would be ignorant, you know what I mean? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, and I got a problem, you know? And I've been fooled so many times by this singular problem before, this singular rock bottom. I've always been here, never, like, really internalized it. And um, now that I'm internalizing it, I really don't want to be here again. I really have little to no desire to be here anymore. Um, it's, it's not, it's not my place because like, I'll never learn. I'll never learn. If I keep being this way, I'll never learn from any of my experiences. And I've had so many experiences and I've made so, so many critically acclaimed mistakes in my life. Believe me, when you try to do something, you don't just make mistakes. You make critically acclaimed mistakes. Yeah. I think when you, if you try to live your life and this is probably why a lot of people are afraid to do it. If you try to live your life, you don't just make mistakes. You make critically acclaimed mistakes. And I've made a bunch of them before. And I would like to not have to revisit this this brand of mistakes. Because I, I would like to say I know better. But I really don't because I haven't applied any of this stuff. And I'm just praying, I'm really hoping to go to Australia. But honestly speaking, I have no idea about how the world's going to open up. In the next couple of in the next couple of months really that it's it's a rough kind of thing man because usually i like that i like to have a plan and i had a plan but i didn't have my plan wasn't affected by the coronavirus pandemic my plan wasn't affected by the whole situation that's happening right now and um and with travel you know what i mean i i knew this was happening a while ago like I, i've heard about the coronavirus for a while now I heard about it back in like January, December when Six X and Hammer was talking about it on YouTube. And I knew what to expect, but I didn't like expect it for it to last this long. And um it makes me think, man, I gotta start planning I gotta start I gotta start planning my next step. That's probably what is most important right now. I think that a lot of motivation is lost in me is because I don't know my next step and this happens a lot with young people. When they don't know their next step in life, they get really stressed out. Which is why I think that college 
for all the good stuff that it does, it is a little bit of a stressor for some young people because even though you have all this stimulus and time and energy and stuff, you don't have much, um, you don't have much, how is it looking? How's the whiskers looking? The whisker game is coming off strong. You don't have much stimulus to tell you how to use that stuff. So you send, you end up spending a lot of time just watching videos. And I do this now, man. It was definitely a college. It was definitely something I developed in college. Um, the whole desire to just like chill out, watch videos and do stupid things with your time and waste your first world opportunities. I think that's definitely a, a big problem that the first world countries have. We have, a, we have a habit, a culture of wasting our first world opportunities, which I don't understand. I, I can only understand it as far as I'm a part of it. But um, I'm not at the mental capability of understanding why our culture has devolved this way and why I'm a slave to it, man. I would like to think I'm better, but I know I'm not. I know I'm not. And I don't want to try to say or try to be something that I'm not anymore, man. I've had enough of this... Uh, had enough of this nonsense before. Had enough of this nonsense out here. So that's what we're thinking about right now. And yeah, that's the rock bottom that we've hit. It's definitely the rock bottom that we've hit recently. Um, nine weeks of consecutive, consecutive, consecutive rock bottoms have really led to this individual point of just, I have no idea what I'm doing here anymore, man. No idea what I'm doing here anymore. But, dude, man, I've never actually had I've never actually had that singular thought before, and I've been around the world a couple of times too, but I've never had this this singular thought. I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. I, I've never had that before. That's this is the first time that I've ever encountered this kind of idea because I've always been um, boingy enough to be able to, to roll with the punches a little bit, but this recent one. This recent pandemic, this recent, not pandemic, this recent rock bottom has really be, been hitting me in places that I didn't even know I could be hit. I'm telling you, in places, I didn't even know I could be hit because I always had a plan. And then I lost the plan. And all of a sudden, now I'm just here like, oh, what am I going to do with the rest of my time in Spain and the rest of my life, man? Because I'm on a time, I'm definitely still on a race against time. I'm not going to lie. I'm still racing against time. I know this very much. And my race against time is simply said, it's, um, here we go right here. So we're cut it off right here. My race against time is simply said when I want to settle down, you know, and I know when I want to settle down because I want to live a full life. Dude, I want to live a full life. I really have that desire to live a full life. And if I can make it happen, if I can make it happen, I'd be really happy. And I, right now I can only really see until I'm about like 35, right? Because I, I have my life planned out so far in my head up to kids. But all these plans are just vague ideas. They're all just vague ideas in my head because I, I understand that I can, I'm not going to cry about my privilege. Or I'm not going to cry about opportunities lost or any of that stuff because I've, I'm telling you, I've, I've made some critically acclaimed failures before. I have made critically acclaimed failures before. And um, there's always more to go out here. There's always more opportunity to chase after. There's always more to do, always more to figure out about yourselves, man. Always more. And you just gotta be willing to keep chasing, keep going, get that, get that tail, man. We're all like dogs. People that are trying to change the world are like dogs, chasing after their tails, man. After that good life, man. After having a good impact. That's what I want, man. But it's hard to do. We have to erase this line right here because we have the whisker going to come up over here. In fact, I think we should probably go and do this whisker a little bit right here. should probably do this whisker right now. The whisker is coming up right here. Nice. Nice, mate. Nice little whisker. Nice little whisker coming off on the dragon. You know, a dragon is nothing without its whiskers. There we go. Bam. And you know what we, oh, dude, you know what we have to do? We also have to do the whisker here. Totally forgot about doing this. Totally forgot about doing this. Now we're gonna have to do some serious erasing here to make sure that they don't overline. 
Oh, it should be okay, actually. It's not that bad. Because the idea is that you're supposed to draw these things in, in stages, and I'm ignorant of the stages nowadays. I just keep drawing however I feel like it. But it's, it's different, man. But again, like, I think that it's important to be planning, and I've just lost that motivation to plan. I think that's probably the biggest thing that hit me. The biggest thing and the reason why I'm so stuck right now in this um, in this rock bottom is because I've lost the motivation to plan. I really have. And that sucks. That sucks because I've been just rolling off ever since I... I've been rolling forward ever since I started... Um, what's it called? Ever since I started college. Ever since I finished college, I've been rolling forward with this motivation to keep planning and planning and planning and getting my life in, under order and in control. But then um, it's just happened in a way that now I don't know what to do next. I don't know what the next step in this phase is going to be. I want to say it's Australia, but I don't even know if Australia is just a... It's, a, it's on a whim because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, one. And two, I don't know why I'm really going there. I mean, I have an idea, of course. I want to gain skills that are not like job skills. I want to gain like life skills because in the 20s, something that's really important is really getting your life skills under under control, getting your 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 person under control, man. Because you're gonna live, we live until like 80 years old. We live until 80 years old, guys. This is we have a long life expectancy. Life is pretty long. People are always saying. Life flashes in the blink of an eye. No, man, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're serious about that. Because you remember a couple hundred years ago, people were living until like they were thirty. Real talk. I don't know, man. Eighty is a long, long time, buddies. And I want to make sure that if I'm going to settle down, if I'm going to quiet my mind down and start building in one place, I want to have a good idea about what I'm building and why I'm building it. You know, which means I want to do a lot of stuff beforehand. I'm also not ignorant of the of time though and that's what I say it's a race against time when I say this stuff because I know that um, around 30 years old I want to be done I want to be ready to settle down and I want to be ready to get into I want to be ready to get into building that life where I'm where I'm at but this rock bottom I don't want to encounter it again I would like if I if anything I'd, ha I'd like to hit other rock bottoms that aren't so tumultuous in their being I don't even know what that word means, but I used it. Get ganky. Absolutely. I have no idea what that word means. But you know, I mean, it is what it is. And we found good music today. We found good, chill music for drawing from now on. I think this is this is probably the best thing that's coming out that's come out of this um, stream. Because I like anime music. And I could listen to this for a while, man. It's good to like chill out too. But yeah guys, this is me rambling on stream a little bit. But that's gonna be the whole sum up of this of this rock bottom that we've hit. The rock bottom that we've hit. It's been evolving in the past since the past week. Pretty sure last week I talked a lot about it and talked about just the feeling bad. Now I'm more of just like a feeling like I'm not doing anything. You went from feeling bad to feeling entirely and completely ambivalent about life, which is even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. Oh no. Absolutely. I think feeling feeling um, feeling ambivalent is far worse than feeling bad about life, in my in my opinion, because at least when you feel bad, you know that something's wrong. But when you feel ambivalent, you don't know nothing's wrong. You you're not feeling anything, man. You're not you're not sure if what you're feeling is even real, or if it's just a part of the human experience, and you confuse yourself about what's important and what's not. And then you get trapped in these in these like diadems. You get trapped in these little cycles of first world problems and stuff. And it, I don't I don't agree with any of that. But I think that if it's raining outside, we might we can still go outside late night, late night thinking. We'll see how we feel after this. Um, we've done this Shenron stuff for the tail, and then we got a little bit like this. I think that it goes here and then it should be like right here. Right here, good, good, good to go. Then we'll draw this this line right here. We have to get him over here. 
that's exactly where we're, where we're at right now. It's coming from a big, fa big, big lack of planning. And I think a lot of people say life is short because they didn't plan the life out they wanted to live. If you plan your life out and you know what you want to do time specific wise and you make sure to get those things done, life is actually not that short. Life is actually pretty darn long. Because life is not long, it's not just short, it's boring. There are lots of parts of adult life that are really, really, really boring. And when you're not a part of that stuff, you're not a part of being in the moment and making sure that you're doing, you're hitting those goals you want for yourself, right? Because I think time frame wise, we, we live by goals. We live by this time frame of goals. Like you go to college, you go to school, have children. Everything has like a general age range. And when you're supposed to, and when I say this, like you're supposed to do this by this age range, right? I think that's how we live our life. That's how we've been taught to view a normal living. But when you don't do that, when you don't do that, it becomes more difficult. And I think that's why a lot of people stick to doing that because it becomes a lot less difficult. It would have been so much less difficult had I just stayed home and got a, got a normal job in America rather than come to Spain. And again, I can tell you this, I came to Spain on a whim. <laughs> I came to Spain on a whim. I came to Spain because I wanted to uh, learn Spanish and yo no hablo muy buen español, yo hablo un poco español, pero estoy muy cerca, cerca. De español. I, I'm, I'm muy cerca to learning Spanish and you know if you don't know what that means it means it means very cerca to learning Spanish right and I don't know it's it's traversed into this other kind of goal that I've wanted to do living in every continent around the world before I reach the age of 30 because again I told you 30 is there and that's my plan but I don't want to be super ignorant of all these of all these years so I want to be ready. I want to be ready for the future, which means I got to keep hitting these goals that I set for myself. And a lot of these goals are easier to hit, the ones that are not so around success, right? I've said I wanted to do this about success, but I'm probably not that talented in success. I have a heart. I have a heart and I have a life story, but I don't have the actual mental fortitude to learn how to actually become better at displaying my heart and my story to people to actually bring it to a better kind of, better, better understanding, you know? It's tough. It's a tough realization to come to, too. I have a heart. I just don't have the technical prowess to actually learn how to relay my heart to people. And, uh, dude, that's something I really have to do. If I ever want to get out of this rock bottom of not being sure, I really have to do this with myself. It's super duper ultra importante. But that's, that's about it for today's rock bottom introduction. Every day is a rock bottom. It's always a new kind of take on the rock bottom. I want to bring you through with me through this experience. Next experience we're going to be talking about, because I think another way to really pick yourself up out of the rock bottom, especially when you live in a first world, and you're living in first world problems and stuff, is to talk about your past. Like You want to get to know your past. You want to get to know your best experiences. You want to revisit them. And I made a video recently talking about this stuff for my, my first day moving to Japan, right? And when I was moving to Japan, when I was moving to Japan, I had a really crazy like airport experience, right? Because I'm, I'm completely oblivious. And that's one of my other big problems in my life. I'm an oblivious person. But um, I was talking about this and here we go. I gotta figure this out. And then it goes here. Ooh, how do we do this? How does how does Shenron do this? Oh, you know what it is? It is, it goes like this and then it goes over here, right? It goes over here and then this one. Ooh, I don't even know. I don't know, because what I'm drawing right now is different, different than the reference image I'm looking at, but we can we can worry about that save it later. Second day I want to talk into Japan was moving into my dorm, right? Now, I do think that if you want a really cool experience in Japan, I think living in a dorm is fun. It was very fun for me, at least. Um, I lived in a, not an international, super international dorm. I lived in the Utano dorm at Ritsumeikan, which was more old school than the, the Taishogun one. And Taishogun one's like really modern and new and stuff. But I, I moved to this Taishogun ryo. I, I moved to the Utano ryo and I'm not gonna lie, I was very happy I did. I mean, you can have the authentic live in an apartment kind of experience, but I don't know what 
what you're going to get out of that. And like, and you can live with a family. I mean, I don't know if there's, if there's like homestay opportunities out there for foreigners looking to live in Japan. That's cool. But if you want a real experience, I think you just got to experience it with some like Japanese old people, right? And we had some Japanese old people in our dorm. We had like Japanese RAs as well too, who were like a part of our, our dorm to like kind of be like those caretaker stuff. I pissed those people off, I can tell you that. I pissed off every Japanese person in my dorm, man. That's probably why they don't want to, <laughs> that's why they don't stay in contact with me anymore. But um, if you want an experience like that, I think that living in a dorm is actually not a bad experience because if you're going to a foreign culture, you want some type of semblance of a balance for who you are. You don't want to be like fully in there. Even if you want to be fully in there, believe me, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Because again, you're a normal human. And if you're not a normal human, um, I don't know, you probably have some identity things that you need to work on. Because that's how I was, man. I was definitely like that. When I went to Japan for the first time, man, ooh, I can tell you this. This not, I'm not a human kind of thing really played a big part in me getting into a lot of trouble with people. Because I was so selfish and so self-centered about my stuff. But, to get into the experience, so I woke up at my friend Emmy's house, that's where we laughed it off last time. She was making karaoke, and then we were going, she had a morning class, so we took the brothers, the bus together to head over to Ritsumeikan, which is the school I went to. And I got there, and like I went up to her class, I met like a couple of her friends, and then I went over to my dorm, right? I had a, it was like close to the school, the Otano, the Otano Ryo. I think, what's the, what's the name of the campus that I went to, man? the Kyoto one but the Otano Do is actually pretty close to the to the school and so is the Taishogun Ryo at that they're both in like walking distance Taishogun's way closer than Otano but I went over there and I went to the dorm and I didn't have enough money something you want to make sure that you have before you come to Japan if you're gonna move there or live there is you want to have pocket money but you want to have like payment money right so like maybe it was just me Maybe it was just a me kind of thing. I was not conscientious of how much money I was actually going to need for my first couple of days in Japan. So I bought, because I had a credit card and I got a debit card. And I was like, oh, I could just withdraw money, whatever. And um, I went over and they said it was this amount of money. So I went over to the local konbini and I tried withdrawing the money. It was like six, 600, like 500 maybe. I don't know. I don't remember how much it was for like a month. But um, it was like 500. 5,000, no, five, how, does it, how do you say this? Goman yen, it was like 50,000 yen, right? Which is like $500, right? And what happened was that I didn't have enough and my, my company was telling me, yo, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't withdraw more money. And I was like, what? And I got really, really freaked me out. I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna live, blah, blah, blah. So I went back to school and I told Emmy my situation and her and her friend, God bless them, they lent me the money to pay for my dorm. It was a really, really interesting kind of first experience. And then we had this moving kind of party day thing where everyone was moving into the dorm. But I was really self-centered back then and I didn't really care much about getting to know the foreigners. So like, I'm not here to hang out with foreigners. I'm here to like learn about the real Japanese, the real Japanese culture, or whatever that means. And I think it, it really did come off wrong to a lot of people. I'm not gonna lie. If I had to look back at it, um, I'd have to write about this story, honestly speaking. I'm sure there's a lot of other nuances that um, could come into play here. But just as like a first impression of the day that I had, some like recommendations, and I think I should make recommendations for people because y'all are going to go to Japan eventually anyway. Um, recommendations for when you go over there to have the best experience are a cool kind of way to say this. But I've been dealing with, see like, I think it's funny, it's not funny, it's kind of sad, but the problems that I deal with today are the same problems I've dealt with for like the past five years. And I just wish, I wish, I wish, I, I, I know wishing is not going to do anything about it, but I, I really hope that I would be able to learn effectively from this, from these issues soon, because I don't want to have to keep repeating these, these types of problems. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. That's a bomb dragon. Shenron looking real, real, real good right now. But um, these issues are not fun to deal with at all. 
And I, I really do hope that maybe this is the last time that I have to deal with them. But I don't know, because like I lost my job because of this stuff. I lost my job literally because of these issues. Like coronavirus really did a doozy to me and showed me some terrible things. And I was supposed to like start my, well, I'm supposed to start tomorrow. I'm supposed to start my TEFL course tomorrow so I can have the TEFL certification by the time I leave Spain. I think that'd be a good kind of moniker to have in me. But the next couple of, for the next couple of years, the next couple of months, like after 2021, I'm pretty sure I'll do English teaching again, but I don't know actually. I don't know how I'll do it. I don't know, because I'm thinking about South America too. I could go do South America and I could go do South America and English teaching, but I could also just do it in work away and like some other shorter program. Actually, no, 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 no. Not English teaching in South America, mission, mission work in South America. I thought that was a good idea and yeah. I think mission work would be a good kind of mission thing to do. My best friend recommended this to me the other day. He was talking to me about the importance of like getting out there and getting back in with people. And it's a plan that I have to look into, of course. It's a plan I have to look into. Maybe like the Peace Corps, I don't know. I don't know, we'll have to see how long those contracts are and stuff. All right, so that's it. That's what we have right here for the Shenron outlook. I think most of the body is already done. So we can start working on just doing a little bit of the outlines. We have, we do have a lot of the work with like the scales, the scaly parts of the body. Those are gonna be some of that stuff. And then some of the minor correction shadings for the outlines as well too. But it came out really good. Anyway, I think um, that's it for the Rock Bottom podcast today. I don't have much to talk about. I just kind of jumped into it. Uh, I made all those videos talking about my opinions of like the world and status right now earlier, but that's going to be the podcast for today. Going for like an hour. I want to go for like an hour. I want to go for an hour, but I have to start making like ideas and things I want to talk about so I can stay on, on point. Anyway, guys, I'll see y'all in the next one.